once again, go to daily participation, click on resubmit, and a text box will open up. I'll type in three significant things. And today we'll just finish up by talking about justice because we have been mentioning the judicial branch, and that goes with the fifth unit. And the question that I'd just like to start off with is what is justice? And there's a lot of ideas about what justice is. And two that are popular, of course, is making sure that people get what they deserve. And another would be the idea of fairness. And that implies not just the criminal justice system that people that are suspected have due process guaranteed in the 14th Amendment. They get a trial and a chance to exercise their rights under Amendment uh, 6 in particular, which covers trial rights, and that the victim's family also gets justice because someone has been brought forward and prosecuted. Uh, but it also involves some other things I'll mention a little bit later. Some of the ideas that we get about justice go back to ancient Athens. And there, of course, they had an idea of fairness and that the people, even the individual, should be able to exercise their ability to control the government. And that's why they had a direct democracy where all free male met men who were born in Athens could vote and participate and hold office, but they also gave us some of the ideas that we have today, for instance, of having juries, although their juries can sometimes be a lot bigger, sometimes having two, 300 people. on them. So the idea that Athens had inspired their people to become more involved, to be more civic-minded. In fact, they even taunted or harassed people that didn't get involved. They called them idiots because an idiot is someone that isn't concerned with the public good. And they, of course, developed their voting system, an assembly made up of all the free men that could vote on the laws. They had various positions that would help carry out what this body wanted. For instance, uh, magistrates or local judges that can settle disputes, which, of course, we use today here in the United States at the lowest level. It's what we call our district judges in Pennsylvania. And so they had this system of fairness that they believed was just and that included everyone and would make sure that the rich, the powerful, nobles couldn't hold it against the average common person and take advantage of them. And this, of course, didn't last very long because the people were so proud of their system, they, think, they thought they couldn't be defeated, and so they defied other Athenian or Greek city-states, excuse me, like Sparta, which led to their demise when Sparta and Athens and their allies got into a war. The Athenian people were so proud and patriotic that they refused to believe that they could lose, and that's exactly what happened. And seeing that, the, philosoph the philosopher Socrates believed that democracy was not a just system, that it was easy for a large group of people, a mob mentality, to be ty tyrannical as it was for an individual person. And so he often questioned the system. Because of this, he'd eventually be executed. And his student, Plato, wrote a book called The Republic, where he believed that the only way to have a just society is if the people were more educated, especially the rulers. And so Plato came up with kind of the modern-day education system, dividing it into different curriculum and supporting the idea that the people should become more educated, including women, which was unusual at the time, especially in ancient Greece. And one of the things he pointed out, though, is that it is often difficult for people to grasp ideas like justice, which is why they need to be educated. He believed that we often have ideas about bigger, broader things like justice, but it's difficult to pinpoint the truth. And the less people know, the more they're going to argue about them. And he believed that human beings, in the, the allegory of the cave, he pointed this out, often are afraid of the truth. They don't want to confront it. And that's why he believed even if we did educate everyone, only the most educated should be put in charge. And we also get ideas, of course, of our system of justice from Rome, which had different branches or offices that were developed over time to not only include the noble class, the patricians, but also the plebeians, the commoners. Originally, the Senate was the most powerful, which is where we get our ideas from for that particular body, older, wiser people, in this case in Rome, just men, which is what we started off with too. And the reason why they thought this system was just is because it got people involved through representation or representative democracy, as sometimes it's called, or more popularly, a republic, which is what we technically are here in the United States. 
And they too had system of trials. They too had magistrates. They too had executives that would enforce the law and carry it out in time of need. And this system helped keep law and order inside the city of Rome, but then as the Republic spread throughout the Italian peninsula and then around the Mediterranean as well. And the system seemed to work. Of course, they didn't have any constitutional checks, which is why it was easy for someone in the military like Julius Caesar to lead his army back to Rome and eventually take over. And then the last society, I just want to mention England, they did build in this aspect of constitutionality. Starting with the Magna Carta, they started to re restrain the king as a matter of justice because they did not want one person to hold all the power and exercise it forcefully over everyone else. Of course, when the Magna Carta was signed, they were only concerned about the other nobles, but eventually his rights were expanded to the common people through the Petition of Rights and the English Bill of Rights, eventually restricting the power of the king under Parliament. And Parliament continually gained power first by executing Charles the, Charles I in the English Civil War, seizing power, and then eventually they invited the noble family back, the royal family, excuse me, and they ended up showing they were even more powerful because King James II, they were suspicious of. So basically they fired him. He fled Britain and they went out and recruited a new king or queen. So it showed Parliament had the real power because they could replace the monarch, showing the enhancement of the constitutionality of turning power in the system of justice over to elected officials. And today, of course, we use all these things. We have a democracy where people can vote. It's technically a republic because we choose representatives. We have a system of government where we have three branches, but we also have constitutional checks and balances to make sure that no one becomes too powerful. And so that also helps establish a just society because it's not just about catching criminals and putting them in jail. It's also making sure that we keep law and order throughout our entire society, not just involving just the average people in the streets, but also that we have a system of government in place to make sure that we can defend our country with the military. Some people say that even includes the idea of taking care of the poor because a just society would do that as well. And of course, the United States has a long serving example of taking in immigrants and people from other places as a system of justice too. So go ahead and submit those three significant things.